Hey there, today we'll be looking into the concepts of shallow and deep copy in JavaScript. Also, this video is a continuation of my previous video which was about creating true copies of arrays and objects. It would really help if you go through that video first. The link to that video will show up on the top of the screen. Let's get into the topic of shallow copies first. We know that arrays and objects are reference data types and to create a true copy for them, we took the help of spread operator and a few other class methods in our previous video to create those true copies. Let's just go over all of those methods once again. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, there is a catch in all of these methods. They will be creating what's known as a shallow copy. Now to understand what a shallow copy really is, let's write some code. So we'll be creating a person object, which also has a nested address object within it. Now here is our person object. And if you notice, there are two value types which are primitive for first name and last name. And the third key has a value, which is an object. Now we know to create a true copy, we can use either the spread operator or object.assign. I'll just use the spread operator over here and say that person copy is equal to, then I'll open curly braces type in the spread operator and mention the name of the actual object, which is person. We have created a true copy. So yeah, let's first do a side by side comparison of the person copy and the person object. So both of them are similar. Now let's try to change the city value inside person copy. So I'll say person copy dot address dot city is equal to let's say Orlando. So obviously the city within the person copy object should change. And we can see that right here that the address object that was nested within has the change city value. But also let's verify if the values in the actual person object are intact. So let me just expand the person object. And as you can see, the city value changed here too. Now this happened because all of these methods and the spread operator create the shallow copy. Now shallow copy is only able to copy values which are of primitive data types. And we can confirm that by changing a primitive value. Let's say I change the person copy first name. So I'll say person copy dot first name is let's say Jane. Now since the first name is just a primitive data type, in theory, the first name of the person object should stay as it is. And we can just confirm that by logging the person object. As we can see, the first name is still John in the actual person object. Now this proves that whenever we're using spread operator or object.assign, we're only copying the key value pairs which have the value as primitive data types and not the ones which are reference data types. So every nested array and object, only the references to them will get passed. And since they are references, if you change the value in the copy object, they will again show up in the actual object. So as the word shallow suggests that we were only able to copy the first level of key value pairs. And if there is something deeply nested within, we were not able to copy those values. And this is where the concept of a deep copy comes in. Hence the deep copy as the word itself says copies every value, no matter how deeply nested it is. So now we'll be seeing how to create a deep copy, which will keep the values of the original object intact. So I'm going to clear the screen and we'll be working with our person object itself. There are multiple ways you can create your deep copy. Let's see the first one, which involves the usage of the spread operator itself. The first name and last name should be taking in the values of person, not first name. The last name should be taking the value of person, not last name. And when it comes to the nested object, we'll say that address of this person deep object should be equal to the value that is returned from the spread operator of person dot address. Now to test this, we'll just try to change the deeply nested values again. So let me say person deep dot address dot city equals to, I'll change it back to Tampa. Now if I log the person deep object, Obviously the city here would have changed. So if I expand this, the city has changed to Tampa. 
But now let's see if the same change has been reflected to our person object too. So if we lock person object and expand it, the city is still Orlando. So here we were able to create a deep copy by making use of the spread operator itself. So we just saw how we can use the spread operator itself to create a deep copy. But the downside of this method is that we need to know the entire structure of the object which we are copying. So here, as you can see, I'm directly referencing to person.firstName, person.lastName. And then whenever there is a nested object and array, I have to use the spread operator to return the actual copy of it. But there exists a much easier way to create a deep copy. And you don't even need to know the structure of the object that you're copying to use it. The second method simply takes advantage of the json.stringify and json.parse methods that are available in JavaScript. Now using json.stringify, what we do is we convert the complete object into just a single string. So here I'll say that let person cpy is equal to json.stringify and then the object itself, which is person. Now if you log person cpy, you'll see that it's just a simple primitive data type string and the entire object has been stringified. Now, if you want to convert this stringified JSON back to a JavaScript object, we just simply need to use json.parse. So I'll just say let person new equals to json.parse and I'll pass the stringified JSON here, which is person cpy. Now, if I try to log person new, you'll see that it is the same person object, but we created a completely new copy by using the JSON stringify and JSON parse methods. And this is in every sense a deep copy. Just because we converted the original object into a simple string and then passed it back, we were able to retain the values that were deeply nested. Now, instead of using json.stringify and json.parse in separate lines, you can just make this whole thing short by writing the whole thing in a single line itself. So I'll write let person deep equals to json dot parse over stringify json which is json dot stringify of your person object now if i log person deep this is the same copy as the person object so if i log them side by side you'll see they are the same object and now just to test if it is a deep copy i'll say that person deep dot address dot city is equal to let's say tampa itself and now let's check both person deep and person side by side. So I'll log person deep object here. If you'll notice the city is now changed to Tampa and the person object, the city will still be Orlando. So by just simply using JSON stringify and JSON parse together, you were able to create a deep copy without worrying about the actual structure of the object that you're copying and your whole job just gets done in one line. Now there are other methods to create a deep copy too. You can also try creating a recursive function which goes down to the deepest element present in a nested object and then just bubbles up each element one by one. Another option is to use a third party library like Lodash which provides a deep copy method. So I hope this video helped you guys in understanding how to create truly deep copies that was it for the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.